Metal filament 3D printing using the type of desktop printer behind me is a really interesting proposition to get to fully dense stainless steel parts. Metal additive manufacturing or 3D printing often comes with very significant running costs, very significant health and safety costs and very significant other considerations to be able to make fully dense metal components using additive manufacturing. The stainless steel filaments made by BASF in both 316L and 174PH blends is an ideal way to get involved with this method of metal additive manufacturing. And together with the print material profile generated together with Ultimaker makes it relatively straightforward to start 3D printing metal parts. You just need to ensure that you've got the correct hardened steel nozzle to print with these materials and the correct bed adhesion and you're good to go in terms of 3D printing. What you do need to consider though is the next stage which is post-processing of the parts through what's called debind and sintering. That's a two-stage process. The first stage is debinding where the polymer content in the filament is actually taken away leaving just behind the metal powder. That then leads to the second part of the process called sintering where that metal powder is fused together to a final part that is 96 to 98 percent dense. The other thing that you need to understand through the debinding and sintering process are the limitations that you have on the design and the 3D printing of the parts that come before it. That means understanding things like part shrinkage, wall thicknesses, density, overhangs and all of those kind of considerations to ensure that you can get to a successfully post-processed part. So in understanding each part of the process, you can get to a successful metal 3D printed part like this one that can be made on a desktop printer like the one beside me. So as part of the process, you need to understand some of the things like shrinkage, part size limitations, wall thicknesses, density, and other things that can affect the stability of the part through that debind and sintering stage. So we've assisted MedTech in preparing their part for successful 3D printing. They've now 3D printed it and it's gone away for post-processing with our post-processing partner. And we'll see how that turns out in a later video. Once customers have bought the filament and printed their components, components are then sent to us here at CMG Technologies to carry out the final stages of turning the printed part into a solid metal component. Hello there, um, I'm Phil Grimmer from CMG Technologies. Currently we're working with um, 3D GBRE um, our, and MedTech on a new component um, which has been 3D printed as shown behind us, this big component here, um, currently it's up to um, debind stage, it's been printed and um, all we've got to do now is process it through our debind oven. Um, this oven here is a Kramer catalytic debinding oven and basically what that does, it, um, it removes the acetyl, the, the backbone of the, the binder system within the, the product itself. Yeah. Once it comes out, then we'll be on to the sintering side. Okay, so um, while the, the, the part is in the oven, um, we have to gauge how long it's got to stay in the oven for. And generally the, the rule of thumb is one millimetre um, per hour. So it's got to be, um, for every, so if the part was 10 mil thick, it may have to stay in the oven up to 10 hours with acid um, being drip fed into the oven. So one thing we've got to mention is the shrinkage. Um, this component was designed with um, a 20% in the X and Y and 26% um, in the Z. So if you can see as, as I'm holding up, there's, um, there's quite a lot of difference. So that, that shows um, what's happening at the shrinkage side of things um, once it's been sintered. So obviously during debind, it holds its same um, size and shape. That's very important at the um, catalytic debinding stage and as it sinters and it gets past a thousand degrees it then starts slowly um, shrinking down to its final size.
Okay, now our part's been um, fully debound, it's ready for sintering. This is our sintering furnace. Um, it will sinter the component down to a very high density. Uh, generally it takes about eight to ten hours for that process to fully um, to fully finish. Um, it will it will basically the sintering furnace um, it will go into vacuum and to pump all the air out and once that's been completed it will slowly warm up and then it will add um, um, hydrogen along the way. So it will it will then go into a very kind of low um, just above the atmospheric pressure um, um, of hydrogen, a hydrogen blanket. So as that carries on, it will, take, it will take little steps, it will go up to 600 degrees, and then we'll carry on going up to about 1360 degrees for this 316L component to be fully um, densified, and then it will slowly cool down over a few hours. Um, we'll do a quench procedure right at the very end to cool the furnace down, enough so people can um, open the doors and um, take the parts out safely. So the part that Medtech have 3D printed has now been returned to us back from CMG Technologies who've carried out the debind and sintering process. The part that's come back has been very successful. You can see here the setter that was created to actually aid the stability of the part through the debind and sintering process. And you can see we've got to a very successful final part that with just a small amount of polish has actually produced what you see in my hand. So we're now going to send this down to Medtech for them to share with their customer and we can see it in the final end application. So if you've got an application that you think could benefit from metal filament 3D printing, get in touch with us at 3DGBIRE and we can take you through the entire process in a consultative manner. Hi there, um, I'm Samuel Oberforce and my role at CMG Technologies Limited is research and development in materials and new technologies for 3D printing, mainly metal 3D printing and ceramic 3D printing as well. So our technology is based on sintrable materials. When one prints the green part, it goes through a sintering oven where the binder is removed to get your metal or ceramic component. So um, this technology is complementary to metal processing technologies like metal, uh, metal injection molding in short, MEM, because with this technology, one could produce components, metal or ceramic components, which could never be produced by metal injection molding. So talking about planetary gears, very complicated um, medical components and high detail um, um, machinery parts. Additionally, with this technology, one can produce small quantities of components, so we're talking about small series production, whereby producing a mold just for metal injection molding could be very costly. So basically, one could think of one up to 500 components with, with this 3D printing technology. And finally, talking about functional prototyping, whereby one needs to settle a project with a potential customer. With this technology, one can produce a, a functional prototype quickly without having to waste a lot of time in producing just a mold for the prototype. And one can integrate quickly with this technology to get the right prototype for the, uh, for the, for the, um, for the customer. And finally, this, this 3D printing technology, which is based on a filament, has a lot of advantages compared with other metal 3D printing technologies like sele selective laser sintering. And one of the big advantages is very costly and user friendly, whereby a metal 3D printing technology like selective laser melting is very, very costly and it's not very user friendly. You need very high technical knowledge to operate it.